So this clip looks at the assessment question that goes with the aldehyde and the ketones. We're being given compounds C, D and E, and we're being asked to describe chemical tests you would carry out in test tubes to distinguish between C, D and E. So not spectroscopy, things we could do in test tubes. It says includes reagents, relevant observations and also equations. So if I was faced with this question, I would just identify the functional groups in C, D and E first. So C has got a ketone, because it's got a C double bond in the middle of the chain, and it's got an alcohol, and that's on the end of the chain, so that's a primary alcohol. And that's important that I identify that's primary. Compound D, also an alcohol, but this one is a secondary alcohol, and it's an aldehyde. It's got a C double bond O on the end. And then E is a tertiary alcohol and a ketone. So I want to distinguish between them, which means I separate them out. It doesn't mean I've got to test for every single functional group. It just means I've got to identify them. So I would be looking for a difference. And I think the thing would strike me first is that compound D is an aldehyde and the other two are ketones. And I know how to distinguish an aldehyde and a ketone. I can do the ammoniacal silver nitrate test. So I would react all the compounds with ammoniacal silver nitrate. Now this used to be called Tollens, but ammoniacal silver nitrate is the up-to-date name. So that's the name that I want you to use. And D will give a silver mirror. So that means I've identified D. And I've got to give an equation. So let's stick with skeletal formulae because that's what we've been given. This is an oxidation reaction. So we'll make a carboxylic acid in that reaction. And we also... Uh, because I'm going to oxidise it twice because it's an aldehyde. No, just oxidising it once to make the carboxylic acid. So that's my first positive test. So I've done D. I now want to distinguish C and E. Well, the ketone is not going to help me do that because they've both got a ketone. But the type of alcohol I've got is going to help me do that. Because primary alcohols can be oxidised and tertiary alcohols can't. So my next step is to react C and D with potassium dichromate and dilute sulfuric acid and do that under reflux and C will give a colour change. The colour change here is happening to the dichromate and that will go from orange through to green. So an equation for that, only doing an equation for C. Oxidation again, primary alcohol, so it can be oxidised twice. And that will give me carboxylic acid and a water molecule. So how would the marks be assigned? So one mark for the test and the observations, one mark for the balanced equation, one mark for the test and observations, one mark for the balanced equation. Now we're on to the second part of the question. Now there's a bit of information at the beginning of this question that we need to know about. It says aldehydes and ketones are both reduced by NaBH4. Well we know that I hope. When I see that my, my brain goes ah H minus. So I make a note of that when I read NaBH4. When used in the presence of a CCl3 catalyst NaBH4 only reduces Ketones. So that's something I'm not expected to know. It's a bit of information I've been given. Compound F has the structural formula and then it gives me its formula. It's reduced by NaBH4 in the presence of a CeCl3 catalyst. So that's only going to react with the ketone. I was just told that to form one of C, D or E. So the mechanism for this reaction identify the product formed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw out this structure. And that's going to help me focus on which bit of my structure is going to take part in the reaction. Because the question tells me 
only the ketone takes part. So it's here that I'm going to do the chemistry. The end here, and it's got a hydrogen on it, so that's the aldehyde at the end. So show the mechanism, here we go then. Giving myself a bit of space and focusing in on the ketone group. So label the dipoles, delta plus, delta minus, H minus with its lone pair. Lone pair of electrons attacks the carbon, causes the carbon oxygen bond to break. Now I'm thinking that, I don't need to write it, but that's helping me work out what's happening. So a bond has been formed between the carbon and the new hydrogen, so I'm leaving that on there. And this is always aqueous, so the NaBH4 is aqueous, so I've got H, O, H for my water. Label my dipoles, lone pair of electrons, attacks the hydrogen, breaks the hydrogen oxygen bond. Then get an OH on here. And I get an OH minus bond. So, how would the marks be assigned for this one? It's a good question. So, one mark for the arrow coming from the middle of the lone pair. The second mark for the dipole and the arrow. The third mark for the arrow from the lone pair attacking the hydrogen and that bond breaking. So, two things there. And then I've got to identify the product that's formed. And I can check back because it said it was one of C, D or E. If I check back, I know I've done it right because I've actually made compound D. So just have a look at the structure of compound D and then look at what I've made in the reaction. And you can see there that they are the same thing. So my final mark is for identifying that this was compound D.